this one is on, I'll get to this one eventually, but just understanding just this concept of like, we validate each other's feelings no matter what. So whatever yeah. you're feeling is real to you, it has nothing to do with me. Yeah. So I may be not responsible for why you're feeling yeah. the way that you are, but I'm still gonna validate it so you feel seen and heard yeah. and understood. Yeah. Because that's safety and security again. Yeah. Because if not, we go back to number one, if, if suddenly I say to you, yeah. I didn't mean to hurt you, what are you talking about? Now we have a safety and security no, issue. I'm not, I'm not getting hurt, I next time. Exactly, yeah. now we're starting off at, at, at stage one again. Yeah. The foundation has to be there. I am gonna see you and hear you and understand you. It doesn't mean I agree with you. Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm at fault for it. It doesn't even mean I need to problem solve it. No, exactly. But I don't say things like, oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. Yeah. <laughs> Just even that term. And I don't have this on this list, but I'm going to say it in this point because I think it's important to remember person first, problem second. Yeah. Welcome to the Relationship Psychologist Podcast, a place where we dive deep into all things relationships. I'm Dana Mullen. And I'm Alicia Hinger, and we are Soul Sisters Best Student Psychologists. We're on a mission to change and culture relationships. Each week, we will discuss our expertise in the field of psychology, interview experts, spiritual leaders, and real people. Our goal in every episode is to give our listeners tools to implement in their lives today. This podcast is not therapy, nor should we substitute for therapy, but instead we're here to motivate, support, and guide your conscious journey in this life. The best way to support our podcast is to subscribe and give it a five-star review. Thanks so much for joining. Let's dive in. Welcome to episode one of the Relationship Psychologist Podcast. Here we are. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> we have made it. And we are like so excited. I think that this is probably the most important kind of piece of what we do is, yeah. is really talking about secure relationships. So yeah. So this is the foundation essentially for everything we do as therapists, but also the foundation of this podcast. So we wanted to kind of give you this as episode one to understand what does that mean when we say secure functioning, secure attachment, secure relationship. Like just to kind of define those or, or like parcel things out for individuals that are listening. And then just give some brief introduction to like what is attachment a little bit. Yeah. And then Dana's doing the Russell Brand today. She's got her papers. Do you guys watch Russell Brand? I know he's funny, but he always has yeah. papers when he makes me laugh. I like to have a little bit of my notes, just the way that I roll. <laughs> I know, I don't, I'm just going to wing it. I don't have any yeah. notes. So. <laughs> I'll defer to you in your notes. Today. Sounds good. <laughs> okay, so. So there's a difference between secure functioning and secure attachment. Let's start with that first. Yeah. And so let's do attachment first. So attachment, you know, when people think of attachment, what is it? It's really the way you've tethered, attached, you know, learned to connect with your early caregivers, essentially. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, as a, as a child. So yeah. when we're looking at um, understanding where we come from, we're looking at those first kind of 11 years of life. Yeah. How were those relationships that you had with your primary caregivers, whoever those were, mother, father, grandparent, yeah. whoever took care of you. Yeah, the people, yeah, little caregivers in your life. And so, like, who were the adults that played with you? Who were the adults that had your back? Who were the adults that really knew you, got you, saw to the core of you, attuned into you? Like, so all those kind of attachment questions that we would ask. Mm -hmm. And so then out of that, we would kind of assess or help people discover their attachment style as a kid, which we know, you know, kind of our default mode. So we have more blueprints here, right? So neuroplasticity and blueprints is we have a default mode that we've developed through childhood. Mm -hmm. And then as we age and grow, you know, again, what we talk about you know, in our direction, mind more islandy, yours more wavy. Um, but you know, I'm I'm secure functioning in my relationship, and so we'll get into that in a sec. I'm also more secure as individuals. My default is still islandy by nature, yeah. but I've done my work to understand my parts and to grow my mm -hmm. roots, and right, that's a whole other episode. But yeah, so let's just define a little bit. So secure, you know, attachment system sounds like what it is. It's kind of what we call uh, Stan would call the anchor, right? Yeah, I want to just add to what you were just saying, Lisha, that for people to understand that. Um, this this has become something that people are really attached to these yes. ideas of attachment styles, and they're like, I am anxious or I am yeah. avoidant, and it is really something that when we look into childhood, you may really fit in right. into one. You might, yeah. but you may fit into several of them, and you may, like you said, you would have a default as yeah. to I may be a bit more avoidant like, but you can still create a secure relationship. It yes. doesn't matter where you come from. So yeah. understanding your own history and your partner's history will help yeah. be able to create yeah. a secure relationship. Yeah. 
and even for parenting. Like even when you talk about the parenting thing, like understanding how to grow that with your kids, you know, you can help to create those secure roots with your with your children, which is kind of cool to learn that stuff. Mm-hmm. However, just for the parents listening, you can also mess it up. Like you can miss a tune. What is it like? Harvard said eighty percent of the time you can miss a tune, and they can still have secure functioning. They can still be yes. securely attached. So no pressure. Learn some of these skills, apply them to your relationships, but no pressure you have to do this perfectly because no one's perfect at this. No, there and, yeah. and that is not that's definitely not the bar. The bar is actually, I really feel like so we have guardrails in our relationship with ourselves and with others yeah. where we go, okay, this is what we're trying to aspire to, but when we go off the rails, we know what to do yeah. to get back. Because yeah. there's no perfection. No, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the skills have to bring yourself back in and to give others grace when yes. they go to their defaults or off their guardrails, like you yeah. said, to give them grace and to cue them and encourage them and invite them back in without shame or blame or criticism or judgment, mm-hmm. right? That people go to these default modes. Yeah. Okay. So the anchor, right? Or the, the securely attached, you know, kid, you know, they grew up in an environment that, that primary focus, like relationships were first. Yes. That, that was the focus of the attachment system of the family system. That relationships were important. They yeah. were first. So those kids are more flexible, right? Yeah. They're, they naturally have better ways to self-regulate and, and co-regulate. They can like regulate with you yeah. with themselves. They're flexible. They're adaptable. They're emergent. All those good words. And they're expressive, and they yeah. saw their parent be expressive. Yeah. And they tend to be the same kind of person throughout time, so they yeah. don't change a lot. Yeah. In their personality, they yeah. kind of are who they are. Yeah. So they, I mean, they like relationships. Yeah. They like to connect. They actually like their own alone time too, and they know the difference of when they want mm-hmm. and when they don't. Um, they give grace to others. I think they're more forgiving. Yes, of and and they really do value true mutuality. Yeah, which is a really big piece of that. Yeah, what's good for you is good for me. That yeah. brings us them together for yeah. sure. Yeah, and they they like to talk, but they don't have to talk. Yeah, they like their alone time, but they like to be with people as well. Yeah. So there's kind of a balance in the way that they have their relationship with themselves and with others. Yeah. So we just kind of feel this like flowy, more easygoing attachment system that can adapt. Yeah. And regulate and be with and make space for and grace for others as well as with self. They have good boundaries. They have self love. They were, you know, they were given, you know, love. They were giving, given, given um, I don't know, what would you say? They, they, they were given positive affirmations about who they are as a person, not just yeah. what they do. Not just yes. like you're good at sports or just because you're pretty or because you're smart. No, you're just, I just love you because you're you. Like, I'm just yes. happy to be in your space. And yeah. so they have natural self love, which is then easier to help put up boundaries. Yes, definitely. And, and these people who come from more of this kind of secure background, um, we'll call in this episode as well, kind of the anchor, yeah. which is from Dr. Stan Tatkin's yeah. work. Um, these people, what makes it worse for them is when they're in relationship, when they do not feel loved, when they feel dismissed, yeah. and when they feel devalued. Which makes sense. If the relationship was first, and I yeah. value that, if you devalue that, it's going to cause me distress. Yes. It's going to be out of my norm, out of my blueprint of like, this doesn't make sense to me. Why are you not putting me first? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, relationship first, sorry. Yeah, and one other piece just to that is just that these are people who are, they're not perfect, there's no such thing, but yeah. they have emotions, they have ups and downs, they just do a, a fairly good job of regulating themselves and yeah. asking for help when they need it. Yes, yeah, okay. Let's move on to the anchor, or the island, I mean? Island, the okay. avoidance. The avoidance, right? Classic me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, this right. is Alicia, and she loves... But it's funny because you're not really anymore. No, yeah. I mean, well, I stand to them an island in recovery. Totally. Which is kind of what Stan is too, I think. Yes. Uh, which is why we click. Yeah. <laughs> North Island in recovery. So yes. now I can wave out and but I have a, you know, I wasn't wavy what when Drew left after high school to go to his high school trip. Mm-hmm. I felt so, like, I literally stood on, like, tr- on the driveway bawling and was like, yeah. ooh, and he's like, Mom, like, I'm just... I know I'm a fan. I just, yes. What is this? Like, oh my God, I'm so and, emotional. <laughs> and what you're saying, Alicia, really fits into the idea that our attachments are different with different people yeah. also. So yeah. you could come from a, a childhood where you were not as attached, like maybe as we're going to talk about the yeah. avoidant attachment, but that doesn't mean that you can't attach yeah. to other relationships. So no, for sure. It, it does. It changes. Yeah. And so, yeah, let's talk about the, the avoidant, the island. Yeah. This is somebody who loves their alone time. Yeah. They like to be doing their own thing, playing in the sandbox, yeah, reading by myself. <laughs> yeah, doing just, I like it when I have my alone time. I like when people don't come into my space very much. Yeah. They just don't do very well at that interpersonal kind of moments yeah. where they're around another person too much. Yeah, because it feels a bit exhausting, right? So when you're, that's your blueprint, other people are work. And I love people, and I love other people in my space. And so, but after a period of time, um, my barometer of like how much energy I have gets depleted and I have to like go and regroup in, in space in nature by myself. Mm-hmm. That's kind of my fuel is to feel up in nature. 
you know, and it's having a partner that understands my attachment system, you know, because my, one of my biggest fears is shame of like, I'm going to be shamed for wanting my time by myself. I'm going to be shamed for not wanting to be in that space. Right. And so having a partner that, you know, he calls me an island. He's like kind of islanding out. I'm like, I know. So, you know, two things like being able to say, I'm at my limit or I just, I'm getting my, I can feel my arousal system coming up. Um, and him to say, it's okay, go beat yeah. the horses for a second. Or you need to go pet your horse or mm-hmm. like literally push me to nature. I'm like, and thank you. Yeah, and, yeah. and for, for people who come from this more avoidant background, they didn't have that interpersonal closeness with somebody. They had so much alone time that that is where they do, yeah. like you said, it could be in nature, it could be riding a bike, it could be doing yeah. something where it's like, that's where I feel music. connected to myself again. So yeah. interpersonal stress is extremely difficult yeah. for the avoidant person. It's really hard for them to interact with people and they have a really hard time relying on somebody else yeah. and having somebody else rely on them. Yeah. So that, so if you're a question, if you're an island or not, ask yourself the question of how easily do I trust others? Mm-hmm. Right. And that's it for me, again, a little barometer of like, oh, it takes a long time like to create a friendship where I'm going to yeah. trust is like years in for me yeah. to actually say I would trust. And what do you do when you're upset? Right. Are you somebody who locks yeah. it in? Do you go in your room? Are you somebody... Yeah who oppositely would need to talk to somebody, yeah. the, the avoidant island Lock and keeps low, things sister. in. Yep. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, you know, typically these kids are coming from families where performance can be a big thing. Yeah. Image can be a big thing. Yeah. Um, Rewarded even for being so independent. Yes. Oh, look at you. You're so good. You make your own lunch, get yourself off to school so by easy. yourself. You're so easy. You're such a, yeah. You just do your own thing, right? And, and again, I've talked about this before, like not feeling understood. Yes. Right? So there was a lot of shame in being not understood. Yeah. And sometimes for these kids too, they're coming from families where the parent, it's more about their own kind of self-concept right. and with their kids, right? Like my yeah. kid is really good at this. And so then I look better. Yeah. Right. And so this performance piece of like, I have to do good for my parent. Cause yeah. that's when I, that's when I get the most love. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's that vicarious living yeah. with the parent that the kid assumes that, or they can feel that. Yes. The parents living vicariously through their experience. And they, they come from really more low expressiveness kind right. of on the extreme end, right? Yeah. Where yeah, we're not true. seeing our parent a lot of smiles, a lot of eye contact, a lot yeah, of proximity, feedback, touching, yeah, closeness. a lot of attunement. There's none of that happening. Yeah. It's kind of like, we don't have a lot of eye contact. We're in, we do our own thing. We can still love each other. Yeah. It doesn't mean that there's no love there. It just means yeah. we all kind of operate in our own little system yeah. rather than as a mutual kind of family. Yeah. Some of those parents have, you know, a depression issue or their own a self-esteem issue or they're busy mm-hmm. working. Like I was reading, you know, I think that Sam gave us some stats quite a while ago if it still exists, but, you know, half the population for sure has, you know, a non-secure attachment system. That's just a stat. Yeah. And so I think Stan was telling us, you know, that actually in Western culture, there's more island or more avoid attachments than our wave attachments. Because we're, think of our, our society. Two parents really did work to pay for our lives, yeah. to pay for our sports, our kids' lives. So it's just a default mode, I think, of our of our current system. Where in mm-hmm. other cultures, you might have more of, it, more of the um, anxious attachment because, you know, we don't have the two parents who are going to work, for example. But in Western culture, Western civilization, there tends to be a, a lean towards more island attachment systems. Yes. It wasn't a huge difference, but I know he talked about that. Yeah, about no, that. definitely. And I think even kind of going through this past kind of COVID phase where people were, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a lot more isolated and working from home, yeah. it's kind of bred even more of that. Like I rely on myself, yeah. I do my own thing. And then somebody comes in the room and it's like, oh, Right. You know, it's hard to transition. Gosh. We just created so, more islands. <laughs> well, I think we, I think we have. It's, it's probably true. Yeah. You say that's probably and true. and so really, for you know, if you if you recognize that you may have a partner that's like this, um, understanding that and instead saying who they are. Like I know yeah. that you like your alone time, and that's okay. And I know that it's hard for you to transition from alone time to being with somebody else. Yeah. And I get that about you. I'm not going to shame you yeah. or make you feel guilty about it because. That's really what makes the the island um, worse. They, totally they worse. do not do well yeah. when they feel attacked yeah. and shamed for who they really are. Yeah, like you just saying it's okay. My literally, my body goes <sighs> like real time right now. I can feel my parts go. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. You need to meditate. Go ahead. Put your headphones on. And I'm like, thank you. And I'll be all in. Mm-hmm. Like, I will give you all of my energy, all in. But if I don't have time to put the energy in my system first, or at some point, then I feel like I'm like yeah, depleted, and I'm just like right on like pure oxygen or pure yeah. whatever, like trading for water. Definitely. Yeah. And then the other piece, just understanding that typically these people are lower expressiveness. Yeah. So they're harder to read. 
they typically are the one that people look at and they're like, are you mad or what's yeah. going on? You know, I can't really understand you. So instead maybe using words like, I notice that you're in think mode or like, yeah. I can see that you're, you're in your zone right yeah. now and that's okay. Yeah. I'm just checking in. Yeah, exactly. So much relief there. Yes. So yeah, give that permission to your partner to know who they are, give them that space. There, it, because I remember one of the, when we do that um, coming together pose, it was like father stand pose, walk, the walk away. Yeah. Walking together pose. Yes. And one of the hugs we would do, we, you and I did it one time in a class, and it was like, hug her, but don't hang on to that she wants to let go. Yeah. Let go first. There's yeah. relief in there of like, hug, but I don't want to get like overwhelmed. So yes. let go first, and it's like, huh, because then I crave more. But I yes. naturally want to go and be like, you feel safe to me. Now yes. I want to be in your presence and, and in your space. And that's body, right? Yeah. I mean, it's your body it's tracking your, system. when you are a child and you don't get a lot of touch and hugs yeah. when somebody does that it actually registers as threatening in the body yeah. and they don't want to say that to the partner yeah. like i love you and i want to be with you but my body is freezing right yeah. now yeah and so recognize that like you just said and if you do hug your island like partner let go yeah. sooner yeah. and and give them that relief yeah and they will appreciate it the relief in their bodies i'll tell you is an island mm -hmm. in recovery is massive no and then it makes you want to reach out more for sure yes yeah, yeah. be slow with them because yeah. for affection you know sometimes it's difficult so yeah little touches um yeah not patting just kind of a holding but just little yeah little touches yeah yeah being tuned yeah. in yeah awesome. yeah okay let's go on to the okay. next one the okay. anxious sometimes it's called anxious ambivalent angry resistant i've heard yeah. it termed several things yeah we're going to call it the wave which is yeah. what stan calls it as well it's a good visual right the kind of the waves are, it can be really wavy or just like a little bit of wavy but there's just always a bit more energy in that at the end of things yes yes <laughs> definitely these people are more relationship focused yes yeah. They tell me, them. tell me, tell me, I'm going to follow you around. Let's fix it. Let's fix it now. Let's fix it. Let's. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like a wave, right? Like, like it's going to keep coming even if you don't want it to. Yeah. And so for when you're, which is typical, there's yeah. typically an island and a wave together yeah. for the island like partner. It's like, you're too much for me. You're overwhelming me. This yeah. is so much. Yeah. But for the wave person, they came from a family where one of the parents, well, the parents didn't do well taking care of each other, first yeah, of all. Usually, so yeah. usually one kid had to kind of regulate a parent. Yeah. And the parent was just inconsistent with yes. their messages, right? Sometimes yeah. it was like, come towards me and you're so cute and come here. And then other times it was like, you're annoying, yeah. stop it, get away. And yeah. so they didn't know the rules. So yeah. they have this anxious kind of like, almost like a simmering kind of like, rather than boil, but simmering, yeah. their nervous system never really settles. Exactly. So I, I, I want to reach out, I want to connect to you, but I'm not very sure if I can fully trust it. So I'm anxiously waiting the shooter drops. I'm going to reach out, not knowing. It just feels like the kind of wide-eyed kid being like, yeah. is this safe to touch? Not today. Oh, right. Yeah. So that's, so then as an adult, you're seeing that. Like I want, I'm going to follow you around because I need fixing. So I'm just, mm -hmm. that's a great visual. It's just kind of simmering there. And so having the tools to help that wave be like, it's okay. Yeah. I'll look at you. Or say yeah. things like, I need a second to process. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah. I'll be back in five minutes. I know you're going to talk about this. Let me just go to the bathroom process. I'm going to come right back. Mm -hmm. Waves are like, okay, I can wait five minutes. Give me a timeline. Yeah. Don't leave me yes. alone too long. But as a kid, they came from often, and this yeah. is some of the extreme end stuff, yeah. right? Sometimes some threatening stuff. Sarcasm, which yeah. kids can't actually recognize and, and understand what sarcasm is. Yeah. Parents are highly expressive, so they talk a lot, yeah. and or one parent does, yeah. and it's it's too much often for the kid to handle. So, but they start to mimic that yeah. same kind of behavior as what yeah. they saw. They think out loud. Yeah. Whereas exactly. the island is thinking inside yes. and, and processing. Yeah. The wave is an outside thinker. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I like that idea. They're you know smart ass and saying things without quite attunement, but saying things, yeah. just thinking out loud, so that, but the kids hearing this all and taking it all in is like face value. Yes. And the, and the other big thing is just this regulation. They don't do well at self-regulating. They right. need another person, right? I need you to help me yeah. regulate myself. Yeah. Which is actually a little more evolved mm -hmm. um, because kids do need that. Yes. Kids do require an adult to regulate them well because kids aren't good at regulating them. That's why they signal distress. Yeah. So that an adult, the caregiver of some sort, comes in and regulates their system. And that builds foundation of trust. Yes. That builds foundation of security. So mm -hmm. if you signal distress and I come in and go, oh, sweetheart, oh, you need a soother or you need food or you shit your pants or whatever. Like yeah. I come in and take care of that need. The kids, they, oh, they regulate and they trust. It's the foundation of trust. Mm -hmm. So you can see that lack of that creates mistrust, creates anxiety. Yes. To see how that progresses. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Anything else we want to say about this? So just to tell me about as being a wave partner, what can your partner do then to help soothe you as a wave other than giving you like the timeline, like I said, obviously not shaming you, understanding that's who you are, where you come from. Yeah. What can make it better? Yeah. Um, moving towards them. Yes. Huge. Yes. Do not turn away yes. from the wave. You yes. want to move towards yes. them. 
and you really want to calm them. So validating them and eye contact is going to be the most yeah. important. Just validating whatever they're feeling. You're angry right now. You have every right to feel angry. You have every right to feel frustrated. Yeah. I can see frustration in your face. You're upset. Yeah. Um, yeah maybe. Touch. They typically like touch unless they're too in, and, yeah, too dysregulated, but typically touch is going to be a good one. Yeah. Um, the tone of your voice. So if you can be kind of in this calm, loving tone, right. it will land. Okay. But if you're in an irritated tone. Yeah. Well, they're um, hypersensitive to tone. They are hypersensitive. Yes. yes. And, and they're <laughs> and used expression. to, yes, they're yeah. used to this like on and off, on and off. Yes. And so they, so but like, they don't like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, keep moving, moving towards them with positive statements. Yeah. Um, and like I'm understanding you. You're beautiful. I love you. Yeah. I see um, you. Yeah. I got you. It's okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna hear you. Whatever. Yeah. I'm listening to you. Yeah. I'm yeah. Wait a second. And so like very opposite again from the island where yeah. it might, you might say so to like, the oh, island, oh. you might say, you know what? Why don't you go and take an hour and go outside and do that thing that you love, and then we'll talk after. Yeah. Or okay. even three hours at the max. But I mean, yeah, they max. love that. Yeah. That's don't you, give them too much though. Don't no, I mean, like once in a while, yeah. like three hours, yeah. nice, but yeah. yeah. Well, um, if it's about an issue, about a topic, that's a hot yeah. topic, I wouldn't give too much space, because they'll take that and be like, I'll just put it in the lock and loads, be like, I'm done with it, I'm good, I process it all, yes. yeah, it's done. Yeah, and I mean, the island really wants that, like, that independence, and yeah. the wave really wants that, is really in fear of that abandonment, yeah. right? So yeah. that's why they're always seeking, they're scared they're going to be abandoned, and the, the island feels like, somebody's going to attach too much to yeah. them and, and then they're not going to have their independence. Yeah, because they've normalized neglect. Yes. That's what they've done. They've normalized they neglect. And so yeah. it's normal, so I expect it. Therefore, anything else feels abnormal. And I don't trust it. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, awesome. What about okay, it? so that's about anger and secure. So, okay, so the anger, which is that? Oh, yeah, disorganized. Yeah, so yeah. disorganized, that's a debatable topic, right? Like, it's interesting. It because it's an attachment system, maybe. So, like, I think um, Ainsworth, I think she was the first one to categorize it as an attachment system or attachment um, style, um, but other authors, like I think even Stan would say, it's um, unresolved trauma. Yeah, yeah, it's not really an attachment style. It's you lived in chronic fear and a state of emotional turmoil. Yeah, they do, they do not know how to function in relationships yeah. at all. It was severe abuse. Um, sees love as pain, yeah. and those that love me hurt me. Yeah. So. Yeah, so it's literally unresolved trauma. Like it's it's not simmering. It's bubbling, boiling. Always. They're going to dissociate. They're going to self protect. Right, or or at the, sometimes they're gonna go into relationships that is what they're not, is what they're used to, which yeah. is find abusive relationships. So yes. it's a whole other level. Of, or become abusers. Or become abusers. Yeah, it's a whole yeah. other level of a relationship. So we're yeah, we'll just yeah. put it out there. That's what that is. Yeah, and I would say just too for for clarity. I mean, very rarely in our practice do we ever see somebody who seems to be like very very disorganized. It usually seems to be pieces. Yeah. Pieces, like we'll pieces. notice people. We're like, okay, that's a piece of disorganized, and yeah. and we know how to work with that. Yeah. So that's okay. Yeah. But true disorganized is a pretty small population. Yes. Small population yes. Sure. Um, so yeah, if that if that rings true for you, then you know therapy support groups like you need to get your people to your resources. You need to get resources for that. Yeah, you and see? it's it is uh, it's like we can help that. I guess I guess oh, yeah. it doesn't matter where you come from. Yeah. Um, which is ultimately what we want to talk about next. You can create kind of a secure yeah. relationship, whether it's with yourself or with others. Yeah. Yeah, and hopefully both. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. so a island or wave. So an insecure attachment style can still have a secure functioning relationship. That's what we're moving to next. Yes, and the insecure attachment styles, if we're going to kind of go there, yeah. is going to be some of the disorganized, the avoidant, and, yeah. and the wavy, the, 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 anxious. Wavy, the anxious. Yeah. And then secure is the island. But doesn't matter where you come from, or not the island, it's the anchor. anchor. Yeah. <laughs> um, doesn't matter where you come from, you get to create this in yeah. your relationship. So yeah. I guess kind of for our conversation right now, we're speaking to anybody who's in a relationship with somebody. It could be a best friend, it could be yeah. a parent, it could be your spouse, yeah. your We're boyfriend. just curious, but how do I actually create this? I'm starting to date and I want to create this. What are the steps to create this? There's some principles. Yes. And so, and yeah, let me go. I want to start, like, my, my conversation with anybody whenever I'm talking about this first always stands to um, creating a secure functioning relationship is like building a house. So yes. Yeah. 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 It right? is. He does do he that. He does do that. And, and I has great know. tools. Plug for government's got great tools. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and I don't know if I thought of this or if I heard somebody say this, but let's I probably heard somebody say this, which was, you know, if you're gonna build a house, you need a safety permit to, to break yeah. ground. So well, relationship my husband's job. Okay, okay. literally. <laughs> Maybe I learned it from Jamie. And then you need a good foundation. Exactly. Like you need soil to be good to put the foundation on. Exactly. And so <laughs> that is what 
the foundation we're starting with is if yeah. you want to build a house, you have to have a safety permit. If you want to build a secure relationship, you have to protect safety and security yes. at all costs. Yes. Now, safety and security is not necessarily the extreme of you're hitting me, you're yelling and screaming no. at me. It does. I mean, that is safety and security. Yeah, that's on an abuse level. Unsafe, unsecure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. But it could also be, you know, do, do I feel safe enough to tell you when I'm yeah. feeling scared right now? Can you notice that in my face or in my body when yes. I'm not feeling okay? That's safety and security. Yeah, and that's actually really important safety and security because when I don't feel again not perfection here so no pressure to do this perfectly but if we're like what we do in our office often right we have couples in our office and so they're telling their stories and we're walking we're looking back and forth the whole time with the couple then with people in our office and i'm like pause did you see what she just did there pause you see what he just did there his face just froze his body got tight she's not like she stopped breathing and so and when and we miss it to that over and over again your body is like and your nervous system is like i can't trust that this guy's not safe yeah so you just stay there you stay there yeah and then you do what you do you either wave out or you shut down yeah yeah. yeah, so so understanding the safety and security piece for, for all of our yeah. listeners, if if there is any of these pieces, maybe just get a pen and jot down some ideas. Like if you notice, hey, in my relationship, yeah. I actually feel scared to say this thing to whoever this person is. Yeah. That would be a that would be a red flag. Like yeah. anything just that just those yeah, yeah, anything that, that you notice in your body that feels dysregulated, um, it's gonna be possibly a safety and security issue. Yeah. And then or, you can question yourself, like, yeah. interesting, what is that about? Like, let me kind of dive behind that, find out for myself, what is happening in my system, my body, yes. what are my parts telling me? Yes. Yeah. Um, so another one is being open and transparent with each other. Yeah. So, and this one, you know, some people tell each other everything and some people yeah. don't. We're not here to say that you have to. Yeah. These are just some of the principles of what a secure functioning relationship yeah. looks like. And have agreements on that. So what do we tell each other and what don't we? Like, yes. what, are, like what are our agreements as a couple? Right, or in a relationship, what yes. are our agreements? And so, obviously, there's things we don't tell each other, like birthday presents, Christmas presents, and there's things that we, you know, we were, we are, our work is confidential. Mm-hmm. So I'm not gonna come tell my partner, you know, the deep details of what I did to my office. I'm gonna say I worked a couple today. Oh, this great couple, and this was an affair couple, and I had this other couple with this kid, and I, I'll mm-hmm. do generals. But yeah. I'm not gonna tell them I can't. It's well, yeah. my practice, right? So yeah. yeah. So you have agreements on what is transparent, and then I mean, we talk about you know when that's important, when there's been a breach. Mm-hmm. There's been a breach of trust, a breach of the foundation of security, then those rules change. So I'm giving you, we're giving you guys these kind of ideas today, but you look at your relationships and go, huh, is this really important today and why? Like I'd say for me personally, my relationship right now, my transparency isn't a huge topic because I've never had a breach of no. transparency or that's not. So no. kind of have our like unwritten rules at this point that they're not so good because I just think we don't have any. It's not a top well, topic for us. You, you guys just always, you and your husband have been like best friends literally since you were five years old. Yeah, so, exactly. Um, <laughs> so you guys don't really have any secrets. No, we don't have any secrets. So that's, that's why it's not an issue for you. <laughs> yes, um, yes. For a lot of people, it is because they're like, maybe they met when they were in their late 30s. And right. they're like, I don't know how much I'm going to tell you about my, my history. Right. So yes. really just kind of evaluating, again, no right or wrong. It's just in a secure functioning relationship, it's just what's good for you is good for me is good yes. for the relationship. Yes. It's really relationship focused yes. on we're both on the same page yes. of what's good. It's mutual. Yes. Exactly. So transparency is mutual. So again, get your pen and paper out, write down some ideas for you what that feels like. And then propose it to your partner. Here's what I think transparency could look like in our relationship. What do you yeah. think? Yeah. What I'm comfortable with, what are you comfortable with? Yeah. And see where you differ. Yeah. If there is big differences, that would be something to talk to a therapist, yeah. a couple therapist about. Yeah. Um, so another big one is if one of us is in, is in distress, we drop what we are doing and minister to that partner. Yeah. So if we notice kind of our partner is not doing well, they're, you know, they're biting their lip, they're clenching their hands, they're right. moving fast, they're Pitching, huffing and puffing, yeah. you know, do we go and tend to them? Yeah. Or do we just go, no, they're in their own thing. I'm just going to leave them alone. Right. Go to your room and take care of yourself and come out when you're feeling better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like some people do with kids sometimes, right? right? They put them in a timeout. Could you imagine putting your partner in a timeout? Yeah. Listen, you're being difficult. Yes. So I'm going to put you in the corner or on the chair. Yeah. And then when you're better, come back to me. Yeah. It feels gross in my stomach to even say that. I know. Right? Rather than like, hey, Dana, I can see your distress. I can, I can see your, right? I'm like, yeah. oh, I can see your blood pressure changing. Like, and then knowing you, I'd be like, what yeah, 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 what you yeah, yeah. Yeah. my husband's like you. Yeah. And so I'm like, <laughs> makes sense. Totally. We pick the same people. Right? Yeah. So, what do you need right now, right? And it's and it's not in my nature to touch and reach no. out gently, but I know that, and so that's what I do. I'd be like, I'd be like, take your, take your breath with me. And really, right? it that's actually, with me. realistically, and I, this is a little side note, but we all need that. And I, yeah. I just started watching this show on Netflix with my husband, and it's about chimpanzees. 
and I didn't know this, but they have 98% the same DNA yeah. as us. Magic I didn't know it was that much. Yeah. And it, it was Harlow's study, you oh, know, the, the yes. monkey study that really started yes. to, to go, is it contact comfort or is it food that's more important? And it was contact comfort. comfort. So really, yeah. It doesn't matter where you come from. Yeah. We all actually need that to learn to regulate our system. Yeah. Just for those that don't know the study, you can Google it. It's kind of barbaric because I'm an animal lover, so it makes me sad to think about it. Yeah. But they took monkeys away from their moms, baby monkeys, or chimpanzees away from their moms, put them in, I don't know, kind of cages, and they could choose between food or a wire version with some, like, cloth on it. It's all like a mama. Yeah. And these babies clung to the wire cloth mama over food. Yeah. It's awful. But, the, yeah, the study really taught us that we are wired for attachment, for connection more yes. than food. Yes. Mind blowing, actually. Yeah. It is, it is. And so, yeah, I mean, that just goes back to the, you know, if you're in distress, what do you need? Yeah. What does your partner need? Yeah. Do, you know, you may feel for yourself, well, I need some alone time and that's okay. Yeah. There's no, there's no shame around that, but yeah. you could tell your partner, I just need a little bit of space for a few minutes. Yeah. Um, and then I want to come back and, and, you know, start to build that trust. Yeah. If we don't have safety and security, we can't do touch. Can't do so touch. Yeah. that's why we start off with safety and yes. security is number one. Yeah. But even saying to your island partner, Hey, I can see you're in distress. That's attunement. That's the, that's the cloth. That's yeah. the warm fuzzy. Thank you. Thank you for seeing me, because yes. that's the root that they didn't get. Yeah. No one saw them as a kid. So yeah. when you see an island partner and you say those words, I see you, I know what you need right now, I can, I can give you space to, get, to find what you need. That's achievement. Yeah. That's the, yeah. Yeah, so. exactly. And so that's that's something that we, we just always do. In a secure relationship, we yeah. always drop what we're doing um, yeah. to be there for, whether it's our kid, yeah. our animal, our partner, yeah. our best friend, whatever yeah. it is. And it's we quick. It's a quick pause, like, hey, I see you. Yeah. What do you need? It doesn't exactly. have to be hours long. Don't have that much time. But really, no, and it pause. shouldn't be. No. Um, another big one is we base our relationship on collaboration and cooperation and we make decisions and do things that serve both a personal and a mutual good. Yeah. So we are like, we make decisions that's good for our relationship, not just us yeah. individually. So thinking, you know, throughout your day, throughout your life, making decisions like I want to do this thing or buy this thing or go golfing or whatever, your partner's with you in the back of your brain. Like even if they're not with you in real time and you're making plans, you pause and again, just feels natural. That's, you know, but... Often this is not for people to come in, especially you know if they're young and they're just newly married or they didn't t weren't taught this. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I made that plan, but I didn't even consider the relationship. I didn't consider us or, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's, it's collaborative and it's cooperative. So yeah. the relationship, think of it like Sam's bubble. I use yeah. a boat usually analogy of like you're in a boat. Don't sink the boat. So what mm -hmm. can I do to make sure the boat's safe and secure? And now I'll make my plans, but I'm gonna check in. Yes. So you're in my my mindset. Yeah, and really, and big decisions, we don't move on until we're both on board. Yes. So we don't just say, well, we talked about getting a new car, and, and you said it was okay. It's like, no, 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 we both have to make sure. So we're both yeah. on board with this. Are we good? Yeah. Okay, yeah. now we're going to move on. Yes. Yeah, because that happens, right? Mm -hmm. I remember that, that one time I brought up over, I brought a sly comment about a new car over for dinner one time, and then my dinner partner was like, what? And you're like, well, we talked about that one time. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't have anything to do with the money. It has to do with the... I didn't feel like I was important enough. No, exactly. I felt devalued. I felt like you yeah. just kind of, you know, stormed right over me. Yeah, yeah. Um, another big one is that we share the power. So we're mm. both the boss. Yes. Especially when you have kids in the room, right? Yes. Or community. That it's that they, you know, this might sound awful if you're listening, but I always say people, you know, in this boat where there's two captains. And so you kind of decide together where the ship's going to sail and what, mm -hmm. what, are, what are the qualities to make the ship not sink, to make it a like, secure ship. Um, and the kids and the animals in the community is like parasite. They get to suck from the ship. They get to be fed from the ship. So what do we feed in those kids? So we make sure the two captains are on the same page. Otherwise, you're going to get fed, you know, doubly fed. Yes. Or, or not fed at all or whatever. Yes. Like, create a visual like that. I love that. I love that visual. Yeah, I mean, and so many people like one person might be a stronger personality so they might be like well my partner makes all those decisions because I'm just really easy going and I don't really value that yeah. but that even can feel like you've made a decision on who's the boss with different things yeah sometimes you know it yeah. can feel like you do more of that and I do more of this but it's still a known fact that we've decided yes. this together it's not just you bulldozed and took care of this yeah. because yeah, because you didn't, because you manipulated me that way. Yeah. Like, like finances, like I know, you know, in your, for your example, like ours is opposite. So, you know, one person is good at finances. Great. If you're like, I defer that to you because you're good at it and I'll take over this other, I'm good at, you know, organizing the food for the kids or whatever the thing is. Like that's, that's not bulldozing because there's a yeah. mutual agreement. We both decide this is what we're going to do in our relationship. Yes. Bulldozing yes. is on the down low kind of sly. I mentioned it briefly over here and then I went and did it. And you're yeah. like, what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, another big one, we never threaten the existence of our relationship. Oh. How many times do we say that in our office? I know. And this is, 
Ugh. The wave or the anxious one yes. is going to be the one yes. to the thing who's going to do this. They're yeah. going to say, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. Find yeah. somebody else. Yeah. I'm out of here. And that is, is no different than threatening your child, yeah. saying, you know what? I'm not going to be your mom anymore. I'm, I'm actually going to give you up for adoption because, yeah, I'm done with you. Yeah. They, they don't forget that and no. neither do adults. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And it sounds, I'm giggling because we hear this all the time in our yeah. office, and it sounds... People say because they're so frustrated or they're just so hopeless or they're so overwhelmed or whatever. They say it, you know, and maybe they actually in that moment feel that way, but we don't base our decisions on our feelings. We don't base our relationships on our feelings. That's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Feelings are feelings and they're like come and go like, you know, their feelings are wavy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just pure waves, actually. Yes. So we base our relationships on these, on mutual agreements, on these safety yes. care foundational pieces, not on our feelings. You could say, I really feel like I'm going to say some things I shouldn't say. I really feel upset with you, Dana. Like, I really feel like I want to yes. run away, so I'm going to just take a second here. Or whatever. Yes. Like, I yeah. feel. That'd be different. Definitely. Or, like, factoring in, you and I do parts work, so we might even say, like, like a, a younger part of me right now wants to say I'm done. Yeah. Um, so I'm just recognizing that. I'm yeah. letting you know that I can be really self-aware that I know a part of me is the yeah. adult part of me still wants to be with you. Yeah. And that's that's something we'll get into eventually yeah. in some of our episodes. But this is a safety and security one also, yeah, right? Huge. We cannot threaten the existence yeah. of our relationship. So that yeah. needs to be taken off the table right immediately. Now. If it stays, um, you're headed for divorce. For sure. Or well, think about it. If you're, if, if you're threatening the relationship, you're threatening the boat. You're, like, you're threatening the, like, literally the thing that I live in and that my kids live in. I'm done with this. And I'm like, okay, so now my resources, my thinking brain, all my, are going to go to what? Survival. Mm -hmm. Not to mutuality and relationship. I'm going to go to, I better build my own boat over here. Yes. I better keep my kids safe or whatever, my animals. Like, I got to, exactly. right? I need to think about survival now. So it's a whole different ballgame. So yeah. yeah. Take it off the table. It has to be, yeah. Because really, what we're talking about, about a secure functioning relationship, yeah. this is based on collaboration yeah. and mutuality and fairness and justice yeah. and you can disagree you can say i think you're totally wrong i disagree with you right and i think i'm totally right like we can mm -hmm. disagree we can have totally disagreements but it doesn't mean i'm threatening the relationship right it's very different right um another big one is we jealously protect the primacy as partners from third things mm -hmm. third tasks and third people that threaten the existence of our safety and security yeah and even just thirds in general thirds. even though they don't feel that's the whole big so thirds are course affairs that's the obvious one. The thirds are also, can you crush on your phone? The thirds are also your cars in your garage. Or your work. Your work. Or your mom and dad. Yes. Or, or, or your or, school. Or. I mean, anything. Anything, anything can be third. thirds. But but we do, we value this primacy as like, you are my person. Yes. We're on this ship together. Or as Stan says, at the couple bubble. Yeah. Yeah. But we're, we're in this together. This is our ecosystem. Yes. And we make decisions about what's based on yeah. what, for us. Yeah. And not and bring in thirds. a third person here to decide how this is going to go. Because that feels like a threat. Well, it yes, is a threat, actually. It is. It is. Yeah. And even, I remember Stan early on saying this, and this kind of threw me off initially when yeah. he said, you know, a child is a third. Yeah. And, you, and you need to put you guys first and the kids yeah. second. And I remember thinking, but I've got a baby. Yeah. And I, I, I really, I'll hold that forever because I, and we tell our kids yeah. that we're like, we come first. Yeah. We love you to pieces, but you come second. Our relationship comes first. Yeah, so my new visual, but I made new visual. Because I had a hard time with that one, too. Yeah. And I've heard a long time thought about it. And I say it, but I'm like, it never quite sat. So I'm like, here's my new visual. I know what Stan's going to say about this. But here's my visual. Okay, so we're in a boat or in this bubble, right? So so the two of us, the bubble has to come first because the kids literally are being fed from the bubble. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's their life force. So if I put the relationship first with my partner, we put the relationship first, the bubble puts the kids first. Mm-hmm. Yes, I love that. So it's kind of like I'm not putting them second for me, but I'm putting the life force into the thing that's going to feed them and save them and save them and hold them above yes. water. Like I'm going to put life force in there because it's going to hold them, help them up. Exactly. It's going to actually grow them some launching pack for their life. Yeah, I love so that. So I changed my. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. And it is, I mean, it, we are also their role models, right? Yeah. So we don't learn what we're talking about in school. There's no class yeah. on relationships. So if you can role model this for your yeah. kids, then they learn, yeah. wow, a secure relationship is relationship first. My mom and dad do a good job of taking care of each other. They regulate yeah. each other. They attune to each other. If they're in distress, they remove themselves and they don't make anything scary. Yeah. They can have a disagreement yeah. and they don't make it about us. Yeah. So kids love that. They love that because they don't want to come in there and have to parent their, kid, their parents. No. They don't want to get in there and be like, oh my gosh, now my parents are just up there to take care of them. Mm -hmm. They can go, oh, that's their stuff. They'll take care of their own stuff. Yeah. Relief. Exactly. So I can be a kid and just worry about you know, picking up sticks and whatever I'm doing, catching frogs in the backyard or whatever. Exactly. Whatever those city kids do, yeah. I don't know, but that's what my kids do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. Okay, another one. Um, we are each other's go-to mm. for all matters, making certain we're both first to know, not second, third, or fourth in all matters of importance. Yeah. So really, are we each other's go-to? Yeah. 
Yeah, that should be an easy one. You know, for and you gotta again go to like agreements on what's important. Like yeah. is you know what's your for lunch important? Probably not. If it's a really big deal and you're a foodie and that's your thing, then yeah, we share that. Yeah. You know, but yeah, like things that are important to you that you know are important to your partner. Yeah. So that's a discussion with your partner. Again, write this note down. Like what's important to me more to my partner? What are the topics I actually need yeah. and want to share with them? And and how well do I know my partner? Like do I know yeah. what's going on for them? Do I know their life? Do I know what they're interested in? Do I know what's going on for them this yeah. week? next week this month yeah. whatever it is yeah because you wanna, sorry one yeah. little tidbit on just i said you know you could do google gottman's love map questions they're online mm -hmm. you just google them and you can do a love map questionnaire you know or play with a few questions at a time and you know favorite foods favorite music these days yes. why yeah the, the, you're right you these days love maps are really good for just understanding yeah. your partner yeah. and because i mean we get a lot of couples who come in who will drop something in front of the other person. Yeah, and I was like, like what? what? I didn't know that was going on. And they're I mean, like, you quit your job? <laughs> yeah. What? It's just a big thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, another, uh, this one I love, probably one of my favorite is greetings, um, yeah. and, which is something we do with our couples in our office. Yeah. But do you greet your partner with good cheer? Yeah. At the beginning of a relationship, you're usually happy to see them. Yeah. And you're like, hi, you're excited. Yeah. How's your day? And you do your kids. How's your day, honey? Yeah. And then it just goes down to like nothing. Yeah. And then they're like, bro. I know. Well, it's not even that, right? They're like, I don't even notice you. You come in and you're just, you're gone. You're in the room or whatever you're doing. Yeah. Almost like, you know, when you have a teenager, sometimes they just kind of go on. Yeah, to their you're own. like, stop. I wave at me first. Yes. But it's true, yeah. The, and take that example again. Yeah. yeah, and the greeting, I mean, it really resets your nervous system. Yeah. So when you come together and you have a little eye contact, maybe a quick hug, yeah. and you just have that little greeting, yeah. you will notice the rest of your evening will change it will. based on that. I mean, yeah. there's research to show that. Yeah. And so that one, I always tell my couples, that's actually one of the most important ones for me, yeah, for, for them for a take home. I'm like, if you're not doing that, I'm going to stay on you. Yeah, and I even say if they're really struggling, greet each other when they leave the room and come back in the Yes, room. both. Yeah. Yes, greetings and departures, yes. but yes, the transitions Transition, in the room, that's the other one I say. Times. You walk by each other, do you notice each other? Yeah, like, hey. Yes. Yeah. Huge. And if your hands are busy, you're making dinner, you're holding a kid or whatever, you're busy, just be like, hey, I, I'd love to touch you, but I just get my hands are full of whatever. Yeah, and you're still looking, still, which is I that social you. referencing, right? Yeah. I'm like, I still know where you are, I'm still watching you. Yeah. Kind of like when you have a baby, yeah. you know where they are. Yeah, and they look for you to notice that. So again, I take on over this and your notes could be like, can I practice with my partner? Can we playfully be out in public, try this in yeah. public, and like across the room, like catch their face and give yeah. them like a wink or a smile or like change your statement across the room. And then mm -hmm. that makes it easier at home and you know, in private it's much easier. Yes. But can you do it in public? Yeah. Or d try the greeting. If you don't normally greet your yeah. partner, when they come home, go and give them like, what's your yeah. best yeah. Oscar nominee of like right? a greeting? Yeah. And make and it count. How they, like hold them until they regulate. Yeah. So like, hi, I'm not going to be like a hug and pat you, like, okay, how's your day? I'm going to hold you and be like, <sighs> Whoa, yeah. that feels way different. I ideally, yeah, if we can have our nervous systems like regulate. kind of regulate and relax. But if your partner is an island, like they will not like that. Yeah. So give them, yeah. just give them a little bit, and then let go yeah. way before you're ready. Yeah. And then they'll recover and they'll get closer. They'll get yes. anchor and they'll like it longer. They do eventually. <laughs> Don't pat an island on the back. It's my no. AJ's joke. When he does it to me. It's like our joke now. He does it like well, lovingly. I feel like I go burp and I'm like putting it like a, because it's like yes. such a non committal hug. I, our mutual friend, um, Mariko, she's, she's taught me lots about just the body and mm. how the body is tracking. So when we're patting, the body has to track that and it's really annoying. It's not the same yeah. as like a firm touch. So yeah. yeah. Yes, stop fine. patting. We're not dogs. Yeah, don't pat. No, don't stop doing that. <laughs> um, we protect each other in public and in private from harmful behaviors, including our own. Yeah. So how well do we protect our partner from even it could be, you know what? I'm having a bad day. I'm at a 10 today. Um, I've got not yeah. much else to give, um, but I'm trying to protect you to let you know that. Yeah. Because I don't want to come across as an asshole to you right now. Exactly. So I'll give you the heads up. Which my daughter and I do this great. Cause she's a teenager. And so we use that word assholes or, you know, sorry, it's defensive, but we swear. Yeah. And it's a fun, we made a word. We said, what word can we use with each other? That's a fun word. So when you're having a teenage moment, you just feel yeah. like you're just off. And I, she, that was, I'm like, because I can be an asshole too. So yeah. how asshole are you right now? She's like, good lot. Or, or me too. I'm like, I'm an yeah. asshole. And she's like, okay. Then I know, just <laughs> yeah. don't intervene. It's like, you're right. It's your teenagers too. <laughs> it's that language, right? Whether it's with your kid or yeah. with your best friend or with yeah. your partner. To have that language of like yeah. this is where I'm at because I'm trying to protect you from yeah. me because you, you know my me. history stuff I can't override everything yes. I need you to understand this about me yeah and then or maybe if you have anger issues this is another one I yeah. use, use this example with I might protect you by saying 
I'm going to take a time out yeah. um, for like 10 minutes or 20 minutes, not leave the house. I'm just going to a different room to protect you from me because yeah. well, I'm, I'm really dysregulated. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Um, and we, then fathers, or then fathers yeah. too. So if you have agreements of like, you know that person really gets under your partner's skin or that situation or whatever, right? You'd be like, I can see when that's happening. Like we have a cue to be like, do you need to go? Mm -hmm. Is it our time to go? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we put each other to bed each night and we greet each other in the morning. Yeah. I'll put those transitions. Yes, about. definitely. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's like our kids, right? You put your, you tuck in your child to bed yeah. and then usually in the morning you say hello. So, but yeah. this is one that couples often stop doing. This yes. is, I would say this greetings true. and bedtime are something that I notice the most that couples stop doing. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Oh, Bert, you're supposed to bed earlier than the other. So, and that's fine. If you work shift work or I tend to sleep later than Jay most of the time, because that's my brain gets busy and want to like do stuff. Yeah. And so I try to like brush my teeth with him and do the routine and then we say goodnight and then I kind of wait for minutes. So I'll like lay in bed and like, okay, sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get up and do my work. Yeah. I'll turn my little nightlight on and do my work, you know, with my journal or my phone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, and my yeah, husband and yeah. I are the same. He goes to bed obviously later than me, but he always brings me up to bed and yeah. gives me a kiss. And yeah, the morning's the morning. Morning. one for me though. I'm like, don't wake me up. Oh yeah, he, you're just he like, did for yeah, a long time. Like, way. but I'm like, don't actually. Wake, I don't really want the morning kiss because he leaves at like 5 a.m. or 6 oh, a.m. Yes. And I'm like, no, like I'm yeah. Dennis. Like I'm like, don't yeah. touch me until I've like actually woken up. I will mm -hmm. nod and smile, but I'm very robotic. I'm like, uh huh. Uh -huh. I'm just making your lunch. I really don't even know what you're talking about. Like, I'm not even functioning. Or my daughter's like my husband, and she's like, all oh, these ideas, but she's chipper. And I'm like. I didn't know, I, I don't even know what you're saying. Just, yeah. just, I'll make your lunch and I'll like nod and smile at you. Make your breakfast, I'll sit with you for a second, but I have no idea yes. until my brain comes online, which takes, you know, what half an hour at least yeah. to come online. And you're right, Alicia, most most couples are opposite. Yeah. You know, and you, you hear this, people we say, you're a morning think. person, you're an evening yeah. person, but it is, instead of trying to change your partner to be more like you, yeah. just understand how they are and then yeah. don't expect anything else. I know my husband's yeah. the same way when we were driving here today and yeah. he was being quiet and I was on my phone and I was like, I'm sorry, I'm on my phone. I'm just doing some work. And he was like, do you know me? Yeah. I don't like talking in the morning. I was like, like right, right. Good. Excellent. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. Now I get it. Yes. Um, it, this one is probably the most important out of all of okay. these principles. We repair quickly oh. and correct all perceived errors, including injustices and injuries at once or as soon as possible without stated excuses, intentions, or explanations. Dang, that one's hard. It is crazy That's hard. That's the hardest one on there, I think, yeah. for sure, because there's so many key words in there. So repair quickly. Quickly, because if we do it quickly, our brain doesn't put it into long-term memory. Mm -hmm. For the better. Great. Okay. Ideally, okay. within 20 minutes, yes. okay? For sure by the end of the day. Yes. But ideal is 20, 20 minutes. minutes. Yes. Yes. Like, I'm sorry. And without excuses or defenses or, oh. Or explanations or, or intentions. I didn't mean to. That, that, that completely invalidates anything yeah. that you're going to say. So it, it is, it's quick yeah. and it's about validating and seeing into the other person. It's not about you. Yeah. So it's like. It's, it, emotions are no different than physical, right? So yeah. if I, if you're bleeding, yeah. I quickly want to come to you and say, oh my gosh, yeah. I can see that you're bleeding and you're hurt. Let me help you. I'm so sorry that that happened. Yeah. Not, really I didn't mean to make you bleed. Yeah. It, I, I, I why it happened. Yeah. 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 I, was, I was running late and I accidentally ran into you with my car. Like okay. that, that doesn't help anything. <laughs> can you read that one again? That one's so important. Yes. Read it again. We repair quickly and correct all perceived errors, including injustices and injuries at once or as soon as possible yes. without stated excuses, mm -hmm. intentions, or explanations. So the other key word in there is perceived because dang, mm -hmm. that one's hard because people want to say, yeah, but that was how you received it. Yeah. That's real. Point taken. Like, that's it. So if you said, you know, Alicia, right? First yeah. names are not good for islands. No. And I'd be like, I perceive that as a threatening word of how you said that my name, yeah. right? You're like, I just said your name, like whatever. How yeah. the person how perceived it, just believe them. When someone says it landed for me this way, mm -hmm. rather than like, well, that's not how I meant it, Dana. Yeah. Pause and be like, I'm just going to actually believe that's how and repair that for them. Exactly. That's what true empathy is. Empathy isn't how I would take it in your shoes. Yes. It's how you take it in your shoes. Exactly. That's so important. Perceived by the person yes. that's a receiver. Yes. How they perceive how they receive it. And, and this one is on, or I'll get to this one eventually, but just understanding just this concept of like, we validate each other's feelings no matter what. So whatever yeah. your feeling is real to you, it yeah. has nothing to do with me. Yeah. So I may be not responsible for why you're feeling yeah. the way that you are, but I'm still going to validate it. So you feel seen and heard yeah. and understood yeah. because that's safety and security again. Yeah. Because if not, we go back to number one, if, if suddenly 
I say to you, yeah. I didn't mean to hurt you. What are you talking about? Now we have a safety and security no, issue. I'm not, I'm not going to tell her I feel next time. Exactly. Now we're starting off at, at, at stage one again. Yeah. The foundation has to be there. I am going to see you and hear you and understand you. It doesn't mean I agree with you. Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm at fault for it. It doesn't even mean I need to problem solve it. No, exactly. But I don't say things like, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. Yeah. <laughs> Just even that term. And I don't have this on this list, but I'm going to say it in this point because I think it's important to remember person first, problem second. Yes. Content fourth. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of people are problem yeah. solvers. They're like, I just want to fix this. What yeah. happened? Let me help you. But yeah. really it's, I'm going to take care of the person. So yeah. I know that you're hurt. I know that you're frustrated. Now you're upset. I've got your back. It's going to be okay. Yeah. And then once you're calm, then yeah. we'll figure out how to problem solve. Yeah. Then we can talk about like what happened and why. Yes. But not until the the repair happens and people's medicines are back in alignment again. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay, the last couple here. We gaze lovingly upon our partner daily and make frequent and meaningful gestures of appreciation, admiration, and gratitude. Yeah. So eye contact, this is how we this is how we regulate yeah. another person. This is where we yeah. fall in love and it's the yeah. only place that we're in real time. Yeah, it's true because our brain's way faster. When I'm with you in real time in your eyes, it's hard for me to think about my grocery list or what I need to do, or even just right there, I was like, my right eye went for a second the opposite way. Mm -hmm. So I'm in your eyes, in your space, I'm with you in real time. And it's good for chemicals. It squirts some GABA into our brain. It makes us feel, you know, connected. It gives yes. us a good calming. Yeah, it's just good yes. for you. You know, do that before you go to bed at night. Just spend a few minutes just in each other's eyes. Don't even talk if you don't want to. You can yeah. just like, oh, I just feel way calmer now. My nervous system is good. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes for people, eye contact can be threatening. So to know that depending on where your relationship is at, sometimes that can feel kind of arousing yeah, right but so do it in little pieces yeah just in pieces yeah um we master ways of seduction influence and persuasion and we avoid the use of fear or threat yeah. so really the idea is that we want to master our partner so we understand how do i shift you how do i move you and influence you and understand you not me because mm -hmm. i'm different than you are yeah yeah and we don't use it as we we master it in a way of like flirtatious and mm -hmm. playful and right, I know how to like move my body and move my eyes and move my my tone of my voice to like engage you and invite you into a conversation not to threaten you I don't right. use I don't turn my voice against you I don't turn my the things I know about you to hurt you right which yes. we do when we're you know, as we throw daggers sometimes well we all do that yeah. I mean it, it, this, these are really these are principles to understand how you ideally want to govern your yeah. relationship we're not trying to to make yeah. this black and white and perfection it's no. these are the goals yeah. right we the really, to aim for. Yeah, we really want to be expert on each other. So yeah. I want to know your history so I understand yeah. why you tick the way that you tick. My dog so, is done. Lay down. <laughs> Let us know. Sorry. That they're that they're hungry. Yeah. There's dogs coming into the podcast right now. So we'll just keep podcast going though. With dogs. <laughs> yeah, it's it's gonna happen sometimes. But it really is understanding that when um, that we're understanding each other's histories, yes. right? So I always think to tell couples, to me, you're like um, a chapter in a book. So if you're 40 years old, there's 40 chapters that we have to understand. Yeah. Um, and so I can't use my 40 to understand you. Yeah. Do unto others as you want done upon yourself is the worst cliche no. in the whole world. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. yeah. It's do instead, unto them what they want to be done to them. Exactly. Understanding what, what their needs and wants and values and past hurts and all the stuff. Yes. So and if you don't know, this is another good thing to ask your partner. I actually don't know what soothes you. When you're really upset, yeah. what's the best thing that I can do? If it's somebody who's getting really angry and they're more wave-like, more yeah. anxious, sit on the ground. Yeah. Sit on the ground Grounding. and become non-threatening because now your body isn't threatening because yeah. our brain doesn't distinguish yeah. right between perception and reality. So my partner looking at me a certain way is no different in the brain than like a gun to my head. Right. In terms of, of yes. Space. Yeah. No, sit on the ground for sure. Yeah, I love that. Um, okay, the last couple, couple bubble. We've already kind of referred yes. to this a little bit, but understanding that you are in this bubble or you're on this ship, yeah. and really this relationship is its own entity. Yes. So yeah, it so comes was, first. It comes first, and I would say if you want to take notes, you could say, okay, here's my ship or my bubble, or draw whatever you know metaphor works for you. If you'd like truckers, draw a tractor, I don't care, whatever works for you. And then decide as a couple, what are the things, like the items or the criteria to make this ship the best it can be? Mm -hmm. So, you know, Love communication, that. Um, intimacy, sex, um, how are we going to parent, how are we going to be involved in our community, mm -hmm. how are we going to repair, was that like all, you can, you can make your own criteria, your own list, and then you can, you know, get resources to help, you know, um, increase that, but mm -hmm. discuss with your partner, what are the things that the criteria to make our ship the best it can be, because why wouldn't we want, oh, we live in there and our kids live in there, yeah. we want our community, that's our animals, like things that we love live in that yeah. ship, it should be the best it can be. It definitely, why not? definitely. Um, and I already said this one, but we validate each other's feelings and strive to see into and understand our partner's experience. 
yeah. which is that attunement. Yeah. You you never can go wrong with that. If you, you don't know what yeah. to do, validate their feeling. Yeah. I don't know what to do and I don't know what to say. Validate their feeling. Yeah. I actually don't know what to say right now, but I notice that you're really upset yeah. and I just want you to know I'm noticing that. Huge. That's huge. Huge. Yeah. Even I don't know what you said about. I have mm -hmm. no idea. Or I, I didn't know if you're mad or sad. I just noticed that you're upset or you're in distress or yeah. you're just looking like, you know, I'm not sure about this scene right now. And then do you want can you tell me more about that? Yeah. Like, yeah, or curious. Maybe, yeah, maybe. And if you're not ready right now, that's okay. okay. Let's talk a little bit later. Yeah. Go do that thing that makes you kind of feel calm or yeah. let me bring you a tea. Yeah. And and really the last one, which kind of just tail ends this, is that we lead with relief in yes. relationships. So instead of waiting for our partner to come to us, we lead. Yeah. So that looks like maybe we're in a fight. We don't know who started it because our brain didn't really code that yeah. information. We'll get into that in another episode, but yeah. what's happening neurobiologically. Yeah, but you're in distress. Hippocampus is like not yeah yeah but just throwing all the stuff remember when this happened and then you're just flooded with all the yes endorphins. <laughs> exactly and so really leading with relief is i'm going to lead and just say i know we just had a moment or we just had a fight or something happened i just want you know i'm really I, I i'm taking accountability for my role and i'm validating you i'm saying you have a great to feel frustrated and yeah i'm just going to lead yeah i'm going to lead uh, or i'm going to say um we just had this thing this you know i recognize it I'm, but we're going to come back to it mm -hmm. or i or what i say often i'm as far as i'm like you know, you're wrong for sure, but we're still good. Yeah. Like, well, I still love you. We're good, yeah. but you're totally wrong. And this gave me some time to think about how I'm going to figure it out. Like, I'll yeah. like, you know, joke wrong. around. Yeah. yeah like, I bring well, humor in laws. Yeah. And I mean, so my husband and I are exactly the same way. Yeah. And really, I like to tell couples this too. Anytime that you, and we are, but anytime you want to stay in your self righteousness, you're creating an insecure relationship. Yeah. Because if I'm right, that's a relationship that is alone. If yeah. we are right, the relationship comes first. Yes. Now it's a secure relationship. So secure functioning yeah. relationship is true mutuality. Yeah. It's true collaboration and fairness and justice for both yeah. of us. So do you want to be right or do you want to be in a secure relationship? I also love to tell people, I think of like a neon sign above my head whenever I'm in conflict with any relationship, whether it's if I'm upset with you for some reason or my husband or my kids. And I think if my relationship comes first, what do I have to do? Right. And it like instantly it's, gives it's, me an answer. What empowers you and it humbles you at the same time. But I'm yeah. not gonna point and blame. I'm gonna actually take ownership. Yeah. Which is which sounds hard, but ownership is empowering. All it day is. long it's empowering. And it's the only way that we can build trust. If you can't yeah. take accountability, hear this people. I don't love to throw around like labels of like, you know, personality disorders, but really taking accountability is yeah. the only way to change anything. And if you don't take accountability, people can't trust you. Yeah. So if your partner or you will not take accountability, you cannot be trusted. Yeah. That's how I read it. Yeah. So it's, even if you're just in your own defense system and you just don't know how to do it and you want to, it, it's read as non-trust. Yeah. It's read as I can't trust you because no which goes back to safety and security, which is number yeah. one. If we don't protect safety and security, yeah. then we can't build. So we can't build, and we're building a ship that's going to float. We want the ship to float through all the storms of life. Yeah. Literally float through all the storms of life and float well yes. through all the storms. And so we got to build some damn good ships. Yeah, we do. Awesome. So we have built some foundational yeah. principles of what this ship or what this bubble or yeah. what this house can look Whatever like. Visual and views, yeah. yeah, take some notes yeah. and go back to your partner and have some chats. Yeah, do it. Awesome. Sweet. Just like Nike, just do it. Yeah. The best logo ever. <laughs> <laughs> and to that end, thank you for joining yeah. us. See you next time. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. We're really glad you're here with us on this journey. The best way to support this podcast is to subscribe and give it a five-star review. See you next time. This has been a Bread Dog Studios production.